Hello and welcome to another special AutoVista Group video. Joining me today via video conference is Peter Georgiev, Climate and E-Mobility Advisor at Euroelectric. Hello everyone. In today's video conference we're going to explore how an electrified automotive recovery could affect the European electricity industry. So first off, Peter, who are Euroelectric? Thanks for uh, having me here, Tom. And um, we're the trade association that represents the electricity industry in Brussels and we coordinate and establish the positioning of our sector. So we utilize input from more than 1,000 experts in our working groups. And uh, e-mobility is something that we really cover from a horizontal perspective. So for us, we uh, look at issues that are related to power generation and distribution, wholesale and retail markets, as well as all corresponding services. There is intense focus on coming back greener from COVID-19, with a real focus on electric vehicles in the automotive industry. Why should transport be electrified? It should be because it's a no-brainer solution and not just for us, but we see even greater public approval of this, um, both from political standpoint and also citizens. We see that even before COVID, we knew that a lot of new electric models were coming to the market in the next five years. And from our perspective, the main driver here is the CO2 standards that we have in Europe. And when we talk about the future proof approach to transport, we really think that electrifying transport is part of our decarbonization pathway. So it's a no-brainer solution for us, really. Okay, so how can these efforts be accelerated? Well, we see right now a massive opportunity to accelerate through fleet electrification, um, especially in the B2B segment. Here we're talking about large corporate fleets and company cars. We're talking about transport uh, service operators, delivery services, taxis, car rental opportunities, and even in some cases, uh, airport ground movement activities. We see a lot of businesses moving in this direction. And we're actually working right now on a very interesting project to help all those fleets um, electrify faster and definitely keep an eye uh, out for us and get in touch as well. Okay, so could you give me an example of uh, potentially how um, one of your customers' fleets are going electric? First, I think we should look at the business model uh, for EV fleets, really, because what they present is, on the one hand, um, way lower total cost of ownership, which is something that really companies think about and citizens to a lesser extent. So this is a solid opportunity also for individual companies to achieve ambitious environmental and social governance criteria that they have set uh, for themselves. I think it's excellent that we see an increasing number of socially conscious investors, uh, but we can do more. And uh, I think here the role of our sector is really key because we are the enablers of this transition. Uh, we have already several members that have um, committed to uh, different pledges as part of EV100, for example, uh, to electrify their fleets in the coming years. And we're talking about companies that have more than 5,000 vehicles in, in many cases. This is also a very interesting opportunity to make sure that buildings and sites near buildings are also EV ready, which for us is part of the bigger picture because we want to uh, decarbonize electricity. But the enablers here are really electrifying transport, electrifying buildings, and also where possible, electrifying industries, be it directly or indirectly. So what kind of infrastructure do we actually need to make this kind of transition work? And where do we need it most? Well, that's a good question, actually. I, I thought about it, and I'm going to try to answer it simply enough. But in this transition from combustion engines to EVs, we really need to understand that 80% of the charging happens in the private domain. And that's not something new to, to probably to your viewers. But we also expect, expect this trend to remain the same in the coming years. This means that when we look at public charging, we need to consider several factors uh, within a rather flexible and dynamic expansion strategy for the charging infrastructure. So we need to look at the expected vehicle sales. We need to consider the different power classes of charging points and the different capacities of the vehicles. And then, of course, the locations. This will answer the question for us. We, I don't think we can right now uh, generalize and say, we need uh, one charger for every 10 vehicles. I don't think that's right. We see different results in different um, areas, be it urban, suburban, uh, rural areas. In the end, we're also talking about the market, which is quite competitive. So from our standpoint, it's really about understanding what the demand is. And I think in this process, we can also create some additional demand. Uh, so I think Overall, right now we're, we're working very close with the commission here in Brussels. We're trying to support them with some of our insights from different members and how they approach this. And I think overall, uh, we're on a good track. The European Commission's COVID-19 recovery plan does focus on electric vehicle infrastructure. 
and I'm aware that your organisation, your electric, came together with the European Automobile Manufacturers Association to welcome this move. But what does the electricity industry need from the Commission to make this transition work? To be completely honest, the Commission is already putting in place the right initiatives. Uh, we can talk about the level of ambition, obviously, but this is something that comes down to uh, what the Commission puts out and how that's being decided between the uh, institutions. So we have the Parliament on the one side and we have the Member States and the Council on the other. So definitely more ambition can be ensured in that co-decision process. More work can be done also after this co-decision process when we're talking about transposing uh, those decisions, implementing them on national level. We can see more um, ambition and more proper transposition by government. And I think in Europe, we also, as I mentioned, we have a very competitive market for EV charging. That right now the Commission is reevaluating its alternative fuels infrastructure directive. It's reevaluating its um, trans European network guidelines. So there's a lot of policies that are being discussed right now in Brussels. It's important really to understand the market before simply going about to regulate. So this would be my message to the Commission and also to a lot of stakeholders in town because we need to understand the market. Um, for going into the policy discussion. I think a question that a lot of people tend to ask when they talk about electric vehicles is how the electricity industry is able to support the demand from an increased number of EVs. Can your industry support such a growth in electric vehicles? Oh, that's my favorite question. And I oftentimes hear uh, different events in Brussels and even uh, like in different places, different cities. I hear that there are a lot of pundits saying, oh no, the grid will fail. But then, Last time I checked, they don't work for the electricity industry, so it really doesn't add up. And if I can put this answer in a short way, I would say yes, but we need to make sure that we build up the infrastructure for the needs of our customers. We cannot just replicate, for example, what we have with combustion engine cars and how they refuel to how electric vehicles recharge. So we need to look at the public charging, we need to look at the private charging, we need to understand everything in between. I think the challenges will be dealt with. Uh, regarding the power of charging, this is where, for example, the low voltage grids might need some grid reinforcement. We need to really enable all the flexibility that's out there. We need to make sure that you know local energy communities are stimulated and all that. But when it comes to really the energy dimension, so is there enough energy to, to power those vehicles? Well, in our, in our projections, we see increased penetration of renewables in the European power system, and that's up to 80% of all electricity being produced by renewables in 2045. So this is something that we have modeled um, a couple of years ago already, and it's something that we will work towards uh, with our members. So for us, it's really two sides of the same coin. We're talking about decarbonization of the power sector, and together we're talking about electrifying the other sectors because that's where all this demand will go. Uh, so those are really meant to go together. And from our standpoint, we're talking about one, two percent maybe of annual increase, which is something that we can definitely handle. That's all we've got time for today. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for joining me. And thanks for having me, Tom. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube to get all our latest videos. You can also sign up to the Daily Brief email at Autovista Group dot com forward slash sign up and make sure you follow us on twitter at autovista underscore group connect with us on linkedin as well and if you're into a podcast look for us on apple spotify and google for all our latest news roundups thanks for watching we'll see you next time